Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. You can find us at www.fabricpatch.net and we are going to show you how to make noodles. So noodles make every quilt way more fun, way more exciting, way more movement. And all it is is just the leftover bits that you've cut out into any size width, any length, it doesn't really matter. This is our little Crazy Stars quilt and we do have the directions for the noodles on the Crazy Star quilts, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. You can see that it's really just leftovers, all different sizes in terms of lengths and widths. The other thing you can do with a baby quilt, if you have a little floor mat quilt that you're using, you can use those little C-clamp things on all of the toys and just clip some little toys on the outside just so that if baby is having some tummy time and learning how to crawl, it just makes it a little bit more fun. So noodles, the, be the best thing really is just to use up your leftovers. So you might have just some weird random strip left over. All you're going to do is cut those strips. And I find that what I like the best is the two inch strips. So I oftentimes do that, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different sizes. So if you end up with something left over or you cut wrong or something is weird and you end up with an inch and a half or two and a half, it's really not gonna matter. And if you look up close at these noodles, you'll see there's all kinds of sizes. There's one that's a little bit thinner, one that's a little bit thicker, and then all kinds of lengths. I think that that's what makes it just a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun. You can have something more planned if that's the look that you're going for. So once you have your strips, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew these together. We're gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you a fun little trick exactly how to make it perfect. Okay, so I probably didn't need to use the word exact or perfect when it comes to noodles, but this is just a fun little trick that I just wanna show you about your machine anyway, um, since we're gonna go ahead and sew these into tubes. I happen to be sewing on, an, on a Foff Expression 710, but many of you might have this same foot. This is my quarter inch foot, and you can see that there's a red line back here that lines up with the needle and a red line up here that's a quarter of an inch away. And then here is my quarter inch seam allowance. What I'm gonna do when I sew my tubes is I'm actually going to sew the end closed. So as I come back, I'm gonna go ahead and line up this red, red line with right where I'm gonna start sewing. And on the Expression 710, I just tap my foot and it goes down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew. And as I get to the end, when this red line sews up with the end, I'm gonna tap with my foot down so that the needle goes down in the down position. I'm gonna spin it around and then I'm going to go ahead and sew off the end. What that does is that makes sure that up at the top I've got that perfect quarter inch and I'm not backtracking or over sewing or trying to figure out where that quarter inch is. What's nice about the noodles is again these can be any length, any width, it totally doesn't matter and really if your quarter inch seam allowance is not exactly right it's not going to matter but this is a fun trick to know just in case. And even at the end, if you have to spin again for some reason, it's that same idea. You're just going to stop where your edge is lined up with that red needle, and we know that we're a quarter of an inch away. For your noodle, however, you're sewing right off, woo, right off the end. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and sew as many of those little noodles as you need. And I'm just gonna say that it takes probably more than you think uh, because you really want to have a little bit of an abundance for that. I wish I could give you some sort of a formula, but a lot of it depends on how big you want them, how many you want, if you're overlapping them or not. Once you've done one quilt with noodles, you'll kind of have some idea. I find that I just sew a bunch of them and I just keep them all in a big bowl. I tend to almost always do bright ones or pastel one so I'm always pulling some out of that bowl. All right so once you've done that you can see that when we did sew that we sewed the end closed. The reason for that is because this is the little tube turner that we're using. Um, we do have these on our website and if you click the link below it's going to take you to our website and there's a coupon code for you to use so that you can get 10% off of this. Um, what you get is you get three little tube turners. They look like this. I always store them in a cup just because you want to make sure that you keep both 
both pieces. And all of them have printing on there for what size noodle it's going to make. So if you have a tiny little noodle, if you look at this one, this one was done with an inch and a half strip. So when I sewed those together, the size of the noodle that came out was this size. These ones that I just pieced were a two inch strip. They look like this and they're a little bit, oops, they are this size. So you can see that there's a little bit of a difference with that um, and you can even make them bigger. So this one is the smaller one. This is the one that I'm just gonna show you on, but it doesn't make any difference. All right, so I have my little tube, but this is the part that's that's sewn closed. I'm gonna take this, slide this in, put it on top of the table. And again, I have a flat point or a pointed point. I'm gonna take the flat one and I'm just going to put it into that tube and just push it down. And what's happening is it's gonna come out the other side and pull that out. Now what happens is it comes out pretty wrinkly every single time. It's totally no big deal. Just go ahead and go to your iron and just press it. I don't really care where that seam is. It's not really going to matter. If it matters to you, you can take a little bit more time. Of course, the end is going to look like that. That's actually what the sharp point is for, is because if you're making something and you want some funny little tabs, what you can do with that is you can poke out those corners so that you end up with a nice, nice little tip right there. We don't care about that. The only reason that we are sewing this closed is so that it will work with the tube turner. There isn't any other reason for that to be closed. I'm just gonna do it one more time. I'm just going to push it in, push it all the way through and pull it out. So whichever size you're using. So what you could do with that little tip right there is you could go ahead and cut that off, but what you're doing for the rest of the noodles, let me show you how to put them on your quilt. So this is a little quilt that is done. Here's my outside border. And what I'm going to do is take my little noodles and I'm going to, and see, you can see why it doesn't really matter that that isn't pressed perfectly and isn't even trimmed off. It's just gonna be in my seam allowance anyway. So I'm gonna hang that over, fold this over. And I kind of like that raggedy, strange, um, maybe it fits, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's all tangled look. So I kind of like that they're different lengths and different widths. And in fact, as I'm doing them, if I find that all of a sudden these are all the same length, what I would actually do is just cut some off so that I have something that's a little bit shorter in there. So I'm gonna keep doing that. And as I've kind of laid them out, I'm gonna take my next border and I'm gonna put my border down there and either pin or clip these all in place, go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew that. Okay, once you've added your noodles and you've sewn through your quilt, your border, and through all of your noodles, you do want to go ahead and chop all of those off. They just really don't need to be in your seam allowance. So just line up your ruler, cut through all of those. And again, you can see this is why you don't have to be all fussy about, about turning those right side out and why it doesn't matter that those are closed. Then what will happen is when you open this up, if we were to just press this border, you could see how the noodles are kind of in the wrong spot. So what we usually do is we'll just press your seam allowance, just make sure that that's kind of coming in and see how that just automatically causes them to flip over. So you can wait until after the whole thing is quilted or if you'd like to do it right now, we just go ahead and just run a little stitch right there, just like stitching in the ditch, just to make sure that the noodles stay where they're supposed to stay. If you're quilting your quilt, what will happen is these will need to kind of stay out of the way as you're doing your quilting, stay out of the way as you're doing your binding. But you can see that noodles just end up making every quilt far more interesting, far more fun, and far more playful. So we hope you've enjoyed your little noodle tutorial and maybe you'll add them to your next quilt. 
Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.